modern agriculture has given us the safest, the most affordable, and the most plentiful food supply in the history of our species. But with our global population growing at current rates, it's been estimated that we will have to produce more food in the next 30 years than we have in the entire history of humanity. The biggest threats to face our species are things like climate change, biodiversity loss, and soil loss. But there is one group of people who can save us from that future, farmers. So I'm on a journey into the future of our food. Oh, miracle, amazing. To witness for myself what the best and brightest minds are doing. Everybody wants a fix. Well, the fix is nature itself. To avert the imminent food security crisis. We need to start to think now to, in order to solve the problem that we we'll have in the future. I'll question received wisdom. Why not just get rid of the cows? <laughs> and interrogate how our food supply chains can respond to unparalleled events like the COVID-19 pandemic. Technology is going to have an extraordinarily large part to play in the food chain, and I'm really excited about it. Wow, look at this. So here's what I want to know. If we could radically rethink how we treat our land, what we grow, and how we produce it, if we could not just change our food system, but our whole planet for the better. So far, I've discovered how farmers are adapting what, where, and how they grow the food that will feed us in the future. But now I want to know if we can use the current giant leaps happening in data gathering to take agriculture to previously unimaginable levels of production and efficiency. This is Goon Hilly Earth Station in Cornwall, England. And it might not seem like the most obvious place to carry on my follow the food journey, but we're living in the midst of a data gold rush in the agricultural world. Farming for centuries has been very much an earthy industry that operated through a farmer's hard-won wisdom alone, passed from generation to generation. But today, much of it now takes place in the cloud. The digital revolution is changing farming. Enabling land to produce more with less. Where once a combine harvester simply vacuumed a field for its crop, today it also gathers data. GPS helps plow with inch-like precision. Sensors record crop numbers and spacing. A system machine plants according to algorithms and sprayers fertilize and protect with pinpoint accuracy. Nothing is wasted, everything is maximized. Which all means crunching huge amounts of collected data is allowing farming to move from working on the level of acres or fields across seasons to individual plants in real time. If it moves on the farm, farmers are gathering useful data from it even going as far as to the edges of the Earth's atmosphere to collect it. Ian Jones is the Earth Station CEO. Ian, I'm just astounded by the site you have here. Yeah. When I look at tech like this, I often think of looking towards the stars, not looking back down on Earth. But how does this translate to farming? We realize that if you take Earth observation satellites, uh, which are looking down on Earth and collecting data, you can use the same techniques looking at fields. The dome behind us here uh, is one of our clients, Planet. And Planet is a, a Silicon Valley company. They've really disrupted the technology by launching hundreds of very small satellites. They have a telescope inside that collect multi-spectral data, all the different frequencies, the different colors, uh, and they transmit those back down as they overfly Goon Hilly. Using space-age technology like this means that farmers can now work their land with a level of precision that can be managed from their desk. As satellites orbit the planet, they continuously take images of the fields below, including in infrared spectra that are invisible to the eye, at a resolution rate of 3 to 5 meters. 
Using these precise images, combined with analytical software and AI technology, helps the farmers to decipher and really understand what the data is telling them, allowing them to monitor the changes happening to their crops from pre-season right up to harvest. Where once they could only make judgments based on their land and that of their near neighbors, now data gathering from space is helping improve productivity, profitability, and sustainability. So if we get new data every day, then we can make comparative judgments about what happened yesterday and what happened today. And by spotting those differences, we can see how crops are growing and how, how the, those subtle changes are happening. The gathering of this information by satellite and other mediums, along with the processing and analyzing of it, is often referred to as big data. In the Netherlands, one farmer has begun realizing the transformative power that big data can have to his business by swapping out the old with the new. Over the past 30 years, the Netherlands has become an agricultural powerhouse and is a world leader in yield. But meeting demand for this fair weather fruit is riddled with uncertainty. The climate is always changing and sometimes you can't really predict what's going to happen. From his 11 hectare site, tomato farmer Stefan can produce up to 300,000 kilos of tomatoes every week. But predicting his yield in the past relied on some pretty primitive methods. In the past, I walked uh, through the greenhouse, checking uh, the tomatoes, the ripeness of the tomatoes, the quality of the tomatoes, the amount of trusses who were ready to be harvested. And then we made a calculation based on this counting of the tomatoes and our experience. Predicting yield is vital in order to judge how much labor and transport will be required, when it will be required, and to help inform key buyers as to how much supply will be available. Second guessing when tomatoes might ripen by sampling just a handful can inevitably lead to inaccuracies. And when you're working on a scale like this, even small errors can be really costly. But now, Dutch company Hortiki have developed an AI-driven robot that can take on the biggest greenhouses and accurately predict their yield. They call it the plantalizer. We have developed an autonomous driving robot which can work on its own during the night in a greenhouse. And there it, uh, it takes images from the plants in the tomato greenhouse. And these images are real-time analyzed. With such a system as this, you can measure much more plants, let's say 5,000 plants each day, uh, and you can measure every day. Stefan is one of the first farmers to embrace this new nocturnal tech. So when uh, everybody sleeps, the plant analyzer does its work, uh, it collects the data, and uh, the algorithms do their work. So when I'm starting in the morning, I already have a prediction for the, the next coming weeks. And here you see uh, the ripening of the tomatoes goes faster, and especially on the greenest scale. And so you know uh, you're going to have more production. With the data from the plantalizer, I can predict my, uh, the labor I need, and also I can predict uh, the amount of tomatoes we have to sell the coming next weeks. If we could use data gathering like this to accurately predict yields for more crops than just tomatoes, imagine how much more efficient the food system could be and how much waste could be avoided. But will robots and big data end up replacing our farmers and all their hard-won expertise? I think we are right now in a tipping point of the change. The, the technology is, is ready for it. The systems, the algorithms can grow better than the best growers. And I think uh, it's not about uh, that they will re replace growers. I think growers will be becoming more and more important for the high-end decision. And algorithms will take over for the daily processes in the greenhouse. Tomato grower Stefan is one of many farmers who see data playing an increasingly important and positive role in supporting their work. In the future, data will be more and more uh, important for a company because the data is more reliable than people are. I'm very excited because 
My predictions aim is 90% now, and I would like to have it at 95, and I think we can achieve this. Farmers generate a lot of data. Everything from the amount of water and fertilizer they use, to the amount of yield coming off their land during harvest, right to the positions of different pieces of farm equipment as they move across their land. It's mind-boggling. Some have estimated that's 500,000 data points every single day. But what if we could take this cloud of information and build a more sustainable future? Throughout history, farmers have frequently been at the forefront of innovation in technology. But will they be as quick to embrace the world of big data? How's it going, Sarah? Sarah Menka is the CEO of Grow Intelligence, who collects and translates vast amounts of data in order to assist agricultural decision making. How do you find this exciting, brave new world of big data and Silicon Valley-esque speak and, and, and ideas? How does that transfer to someone who's actually on the ground? Uh, is, is there easy buy-in or, or do you find barriers to Well, that? the first is to avoid, you know, big terms <laughs> and focus on what problems you are actually solving. I think the idea that farmers are you know slow to adopt I challenge that now there has been you know some pushback in terms of the adoption of certain tools where farmers feel like maybe their data is not secure so there's trust that has to be built at the farm level I think we can really leverage the the value uh, that is generated from data such as what we have to start asking the hard questions being able to be way more proactive about our system, food systems versus reactive. Um, and that, that simple shift, I think, can lead to some pretty big outcomes for society. Sarah makes a convincing case, so I want to get into the fields and see for myself how tech, data analysis and farmers can join forces to solve some very practical problems. Jack Rangham is a third-generation farmer and co-founder of Drone Ag. A man in the field with a tiny helipad. This must be Jack. Jack developed the Skippy Scout app, which combines satellite data with off-the-shelf drones to help manage crops. Today, I'm getting to see it in action on his family's 6,000-acre farm. So this is the exact kind of drone that you might use for filming. Some people even use them to take uh, their, their family videos with. Yeah, yeah, exactly okay. that. So um, it's the software that's different, the app that's different, not the hardware. Exactly, yeah. Hardware stays the same. Uh, the phone's running our app, which controls the drone. You tap fly now at the bottom right, right, and the drone will take off. Oh, wow. The use of drones in agriculture is rapidly growing, with recent reports valuing the industry at up to 9.9 .9 billion US dollars. This field has lots of different variants in it. Um, and from satellite imagery, we can see that variance. Um, satellite imagery doesn't tell us what the problem is, but it can tell us where there's a difference. So we're marking points on the field where we can see those differences to send the drone to have a look at to see what the difference is and why it's there. But what happens when it gets to each of these points? Green, what it does is it stops at those points and then it descends down. Okay. It descends down and it uses the downward sensors on the drone to stop when it's about two meters above the crop. So it's dropping down to get those really high resolution photos close to the crop so we can see really what's going on. This field looks generic when you look across it from here. Yeah, it looks as soon like as you paper. get a top-down view of anything, it looks much different. Okay. Because you can see this, you get much more spatial awareness of the crop. So at this time of year, with a with a crop uh, like we have here, it's only getting up to maybe 30 centimeters. Really easy to to walk right over that and be able to see it. Yeah. But if you're looking at something like sugarcane, which might be two or three meters way above my head you wouldn't be able to do that. So drone technology presumably is even more useful than that. Yeah, it becomes even more useful for that kind of thing. When we start to look at things like uh, trees, if we're looking at orchards or, uh, or even woodland and that kind of thing, getting that elevated view helps even more then. So this whole process was l literally just a few minutes and it's managed to, to scout the whole field. That, yeah. that would have taken me all day to get through that. The original satellite data combined with the data collected by drone can then all be interpreted by powerful software to transform the decision-making process for the farmer. Now we're getting to the fun bit, but that was pretty fun though. <laughs> That's the field we just scouted, and you can see the points that we scouted are highlighted. And if I tap on one of those points, it's gonna give the image we just took at that point. Oh wow. So that's the image of the drone. You can zoom right in, and you can see what's going on. But beyond just the imagery, 
the really powerful thing starts to come when we start to bring in the AI analysis and that side of things. Because what that's doing, like you can see in this field report, is essentially it's identifying where we've got high growth and low growth, but it's giving us measurements for that. So it's saying the highest growth in the field is 88% crop cover versus the lowest, which is only 60%. And once upon a time, farmers would have had to treat the whole fields as, as sort of amorphous, generic blobs. And you'd yeah. have to treat them exactly the same. Now you can, within the same field, you can identify bits where you might need to add more fertilizer or more water in areas where you'd add less. You'd, you'd save, actually, a lot of inputs there. Exactly, yeah. That's, that's the key thing. And also, when we start to bring in the, the damage detection for insects, we can start to highlight where there's insect damage in the field. Also, I think what's really important about this is when we start to look at sustainability and that kind of thing, this is all recorded. So we can look back year on year. If, you know, down the line someone said, why did you spray that field or why did you spray that part of the field? You can say, well, there's the photo that proves that there was weeds there at a high amount and that's why it needed sprayed. So that accountability starts to become much, much easier through record keeping like this as well. No, the really fascinating thing about drones in agriculture isn't just all the applications they have for the farmer. It's the fact that it uses existing tech. You can buy a drone off the shelf, and it's just the addition of this clever bit of code that really changes everything. That's not a multi-million pound agriculture infrastructure project. It's something that's really democratic. Farmers all over the world could use this. Using AI-enhanced tech to gather and analyze image data is one thing, but how far could this go? Could we use multiple forms of different data to collectively tell us something that experience has so far failed to highlight? One young startup is doing just that to help slow the decline of one of nature's most critical helpers, bees. If we lose our bee populations, if we don't have access to an abundance of pollinators for our agriculture, we're going to lose a lot of important crops in our diet. With around 90 million managed beehives worldwide pollinating a third of our food crops, losing just a tiny proportion of this vital insect will have a big impact. Dr. Fiona Edwards Murphy, an electrical and electronic engineering PhD graduate, has spent the last 10 years researching and developing sensor technology to come up with a solution. I was working on sensor applications for Honey Bee Health and I learned an awful lot about um, commercial beekeeping and the fact that they're really struggling now. As the pressure to grow more food intensifies, parts of the world are struggling to find enough wild bees to do the pollinating needed for crops to mature. The California almond industry, as an example, they've got 1.5 million acres of almonds that produce about 80% of the almonds in the world. And if you put two beehives per acre in that area, uh, you need three million beehives. To meet this demand each year, beekeepers across the US begin the colossal task of loading up and driving billions of bees in their millions of hives thousands of miles across the country in time for blossom season. But these journeys can be extremely stressful. This is where Fiona and her company Apis Protect come in. They found that harnessing the power of data has opened up a previously unseen world of bee health. We have a small sensor device that goes inside each individual beehive. We collect a lot of different data points, things like temperature, humidity, and we've got a microphone in there measuring sound, and we've got a movement sensor. And then we apply a technique called machine learning in order to translate that information, or that data, into information. Data from the device is sent via the cloud to the company's headquarters in Cork, where it's processed, analyzed and sent back to the beekeeper in the form of a detailed report. So the advantage of our software to the transportation of beehives and particularly to the pollination industry is the opportunity for beekeepers to generate a report that tells them which hives are in a bit good enough state to travel to different events including pollination. So that has a twofold uh, impact on the beekeeper. First of all they can guarantee that every hive that goes on the truck is uh, in a good enough condition to do the pollination when they arrive at the other end so that increases their own revenue and as well they've got the opportunity to keep those weaker beehives at their home apiary and they're able to you know, feed them, treat them and help those beehives recover and ultimately have more beehives in their total operation. 
The overall aim and everything that we're working towards with all of these various kinds of technology that we work on is to help beekeepers improve their operations. So to help them reduce waste and increase productivity. So we help beekeepers to identify where their workers should go, where they should use their materials, where they should use their treatments. And really it's to make beekeepers more efficient is what we're trying to do. Technology and the international sharing of data is transforming global agriculture into a more informed, more collaborative and more comprehensive system. Something that, to my mind, goes on to benefit us, the consumer and the welfare of our planet. Farming is often not thought about as being particularly innovative or technological, at least in popular culture. And when we do do that, it's often dismissed as an instant negative, something that provides us with less sustainable food at a lower quality. So to me, it's so exciting to see farmers all over the planet really flipping the script on that, to build a better world from the ground up.